Iran's president receives a hero's welcome from some in Beirut, while others in the divided country are concerned. A visit to express support to Lebanon or a celebration of rising influence there. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Sami Zaydan. Well, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is in Lebanon for his first official state visit. And although he arrived in Beirut to a rapturous welcome, well, not everyone is happy, as you might imagine. The United States and Israel have already expressed concern that the visit could bolster support for Hezbollah. Ahmadinejad met his Lebanese counterpart before he sits down with Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and tours the movement's southern stronghold. Zainal Khodr visited the south of Lebanon and takes a look now at the controversial visit. Iranian flags fly high here, but this is not Iran. It's Lebanon's border with Israel. These colors are intended to send a clear message. Iran is on the doorstep of a country it considers illegitimate and one they say has no right to exist. This Iranian-funded park is a symbol of defiance, a replica of a military outpost with an Iranian flag overlooking Israel. South Lebanon is Hezbollah's stronghold, and there are those who say Hezbollah is Iran's proxy in Lebanon. For people here, Iran is a friend and an ally, contributing to a number of reconstruction projects. But critics say its assistance didn't stop there. They say Iran has provided weapons to Hezbollah, a claim both deny. Many here say this suspicion will only grow stronger as Hezbollah and its supporters plan to give the Iranian president a hero's welcome during his highly controversial visit to South Lebanon. Iran is sending a message. Lebanon through Hezbollah is part of the Syrian-Iranian alliance. This is a threat to the U.S. and Israel. Lebanon's March 14 bloc, led by Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri, also sees this visit as a threat. While welcoming Ahmadinejad's official visit to Lebanon, the Western-backed group believes his trip to the south would be a provocation. We are worried about Iran's anti-peace position. Iran also insists Lebanon is its base on the Mediterranean. The extent of Iran's influence is a major issue in Lebanon, even an opportunity to strengthen ties and economic cooperation with the Islamic Republic, which has offered to invest big money here amid a recession, is not without controversy. If Lebanon signs any weapons or oil agreements with Iran, it will be violating UN resolutions on Iran sanctions. Britain warned the government about this. Iran says Ahmadinejad's visit aims to strengthen unity in Lebanon. However, when all is said and done, it may just do the opposite. Zana Khudr, El Jazeera, South Lebanon. Well, joining us now are our guests in Tehran, Said Mohammed Marandi. He's the head of North American Studies at the University of Tehran. In Beirut, Alistair Crook, he's the director of the Conflicts Forum. And in Washington, D.C., Andrew Tabler, he's a fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. If I could start perhaps with uh, Mr. Marandi, does this trip demonstrate that perhaps the country's Lebanon's political landscape is shifting in the favor of close, a little bit closer to Syria and Iran? It does seem that uh, uh, the mood in Lebanon is reflecting uh, public opinion in that country, the majority of those people who actually voted in the previous elections in Lebanon uh, were supporting uh, the position of the resistance. And Iran's support uh, for Lebanon, I think most, the vast, the strong, a strong majority of people in Lebanon recognize that it has borne fruit because at the end of the day, uh, southern Lebanon, which was occupied by Israel, would probably be occupied today if it wasn't for Iran's support for the Lebanese people and the resistance. We've seen a lot of concern, though, at the same time, with some Lebanese politicians uh, writing, expressing that concern, haven't we? Yes, obviously. I mean, after all, uh, there, are, there are certain political politicians in Lebanon which will always be opposed to anything that Iran does or uh, what uh, Hezbollah does or what the uh, 
supporters of the resistance do, the, these people are aligned themselves to the United States and uh, allies of the United States in the region. But I think what is significant is that uh, the majority of the people in that country uh, do think otherwise. And according to polls carried out by Americans recently uh, by the Saban Center, we see that uh, this is reflected throughout the Middle East. And throughout the Middle East, the majority of people do support Iran's position. All right, talking about throughout the Middle East, uh, perhaps taking the question now to Alistair Crook, we can see Ahmadinejad in Beirut, uh, Iraq's prime minister in Damascus, despite all that earlier talk about taking uh, Damascus to court. Is the regional influence of, perhaps we could call them the alternative axis, on the rise here? Yes, clearly it is. I mean, clearly it has been for some time. And I think what um, President Ahmadinejad's visit here uh, signals more than anything else is not a purpose to intervene in Lebanese politics uh, other than to try and lend support to a solution if one is forthcoming to the present problems. But it reflects much more uh, the sense uh, that Iran is becoming a powerful, a preeminent, if you like, political player uh, in the region. It's involved in Afghanistan in trying to find a solution. It's helping to try and find a solution in the Iraq. It's working with Syria. Uh, just as on Friday, we're going to welcome Prime Minister Erdogan uh, here. And he will be also working, I believe, to try and find some solution in Lebanon. And, and what we see is these are two states that are now playing a more prominent role in the region. All right. Uh, Andrew Tavler in Washington. The idea, the U.S. idea of isolation doesn't seem to be working on Iran, does it? Uh, it would depend on, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily define the U.S. policy with Iran as one of isolation. Uh, there has been an attempt to reach out uh, to Iran. Now, how effective this has been uh, is, of course, uh, up for debate. Um, but uh, I would agree with both of your guests. I think Iranian influence is increasing, I think especially in Lebanon, um, based on my recent trip there um, and, and reading of the political scene, I think that Iranian influence is extremely high in that of Hezbollah. And, um, and I think that this has led Washington, uh, as well as Israel, to, uh, to, to voice their concern about that. Are some of the friends and allies of the West in Lebanon perhaps coming to the conclusion, you think, uh, Andrew, that they can no longer really count on Western support? They've got to try and mend their fences with Damascus and Tehran. Uh, I think that there has been an attempt to mend fences with Syria, um, the idea being that some resurgent Syrian influence in Lebanon would somehow uh, come at the expense of Iranian influence um, or conflict with it in some way. Uh, there were many people who have bet on that, and that's also tied to peace talks with Israel. Um, so far, though, as concerns um, a number of issues and probably the the tribunal uh, into the murder of Hariri is indicative of this. Uh, Syria and Iran seem to be um, still quite close together in, in efforts, political efforts, to deal with this. Um, there has been there have been there has been some talk of some tension between Syria and Iran, but uh, but so far it's hard to detect uh, political daylight in the open. All right, talking about that tribunal, uh, Mr. Marandi, how will this trip perhaps impact that very complicated uh, process of tribunal? Do you think? Well, the Iranians have always believed from the start that the tribunal doesn't have any credibility. The fact that they went after Syria for years and held four generals uh, in prison for four years uh, without any evidence, and now they've turned their attention to Hezbollah. Uh, and, of course, you also have the false witnesses scandal. Uh, right, in, but my question Iran, is, will, will really Ahmadinejad's don't. trip to Beirut increase the pressure on the uh, Lebanese prime minister to try and scale down or withdraw Lebanon's participation and support for the tribunal? Well, I think that the Iranians would like that to happen for the sake of Lebanon, because the Iranians believe that the, uh, the tribunal is completely fa um, is, it has no credibility, and that if Hariri and uh, anyone in the March 14th movement pursues this avenue, it will only aggravate the situation and make in, increased tension in Lebanon, just as the last four or five years with between Lebanon and Syria have, have costed both countries uh, a lot for nothing. So uh, the Iranians, uh, while the Iranians believe that the tribu tribunal will accuse members of Hezbollah, 
uh, they believe that since the tribunal has no credibility, it's for the uh, Mr. Hariri would be doing himself and the people of Lebanon good uh, by uh, not pursuing this, uh, this the, the tribunal and not supporting it. All right, Alistair Crook, when you look at the political situation in Lebanon, it's very delicate, isn't it? Uh, looking at things as they stand, how much of a real threat could this tribunal pose to the influence of Hezbollah and Iran? Uh, well, I think the first thing to say about this is that contrary to much press speculation, it's no one's interest, it's in no one's interest at all to see an unstable Lebanon. I think everybody sees that, whether it's Iran or Hezbollah, Syria or Saudi Arabia, no one is looking for civil strife in Lebanon. The exceptions may lay outside of that uh, uh, context. Uh, others who may are the see exceptions some here? Are you talking about the United States? Uh, I'm, talking, I'm talking about Israel, principally, who obviously would like to see, if you like, a weakened Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. Uh, that's clear, and the United States would, too, like to see a weakened uh, Hezbollah in, in, in Lebanon. But what we have seen is very clearly an axis, and an axis that is still working between Saudi Arabia and Syria, which is trying to de-escalate the tension and trying to find a, a solution that will satisfy the parties here. All right, let's take that point to Iran, Washington, D.C. And I think, Sorry, I and think Andrew Tablin now. Um, is the U.S. bent on pursuing this tribunal to the point of stability, of sacrificing stability in Lebanon? <sighs> Um, American support for the tribunal, uh, along with that of the Europeans and other ally other regional allies, is um, is firm. Um, they do not um, uh, want a uh, or or will I even think consider uh, any kind of deal over that. Now, what the I think they are they they are, however, open to whatever conclusion the tribunal comes up with. And I think, as some of your guests pointed out, the the um, the investigation has taken a different a different turn. It might turn back. Um, but the United States uh, is committed to the tribunal. But and does, I see no uh, Mr. Tower, there does seem to be a choice here between stability and this tribunal, doesn't there? With Hezbollah, uh, you know, making all kinds of deadlines, uh, um, veiled threats, perhaps the possibility well, yeah. and the scenario being raised of the collapse of the government. I mean, you can't really have the tribunal and stability, can you? Well, not as long as Hezbollah is pursuing that line. That's true, um, and I think that that um, that's why the United States has become quite alarmed over the last few days about that. There was some hope that Syria could step into the breach here and calm things down, as Mr. Crook talked about, um, and with the efforts of Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm not sure if that process is finished, but so far we're still waiting on uh, what kind of possible deal there could be uh, over this, and um, and we're all waiting to, and, and, and we hope that things uh, in Lebanon stay stable, but uh, but it, it's it, it's not looking good at the moment. All right, talking uh, about the regional situation, Mr. Marandi, we've seen Ahmadinejad uh, call the leaders of a number of countries ahead of this visit uh, uh, to uh, Lebanon. How much of a regional appetite do you think there is for raising the stakes and the tensions over Lebanon right now? Well, I think that that's exactly what Iran is not doing. The fact that the Iranian president called the Saudi king as well as the king of Jordan before going to Lebanon, and the fact that for the first time since the uh, assassination of, of Prime Minister Hariri, uh, all of the major political players uh, came under the same roof today, it shows that the Iranians really are trying to keep the country united. But the problem is, is that uh, the United States and the EU, uh, their policies are basically biased towards Israel, just as in the case of Gaza where they support uh, the strangulation of the local population and Israeli policies there. Here they are supporting a tribunal which has no credibility in the Arab world, according to polls, and uh, in it, has, uh, it has held people in prison for years for no reason the false wis witnesses, they're not being summoned to see why and who was who were behind these false witnesses. But, but isn't they, Ahmadinejad, they Mr. Mirandi, also sending a message by going to Lebanon of, of Iran's potential military reach right to the borders of Israel? Isn't all just about making things all calm and peaceful, is it? I really don't think that's how the Iranians see it. The Iranians believe that Hezbollah's victory over Israel in the in the war was uh, because of the resolve of the people of Lebanon and the people of Lebanon stood up to uh, an o overwhelming force power 
and uh, stood their ground. And Hezbollah, they have to be, uh, as well as the people of Lebanon, they have to be commended for standing up to Israel. The Iranians support Lebanon, but uh, at no point did have the Iranians called for attacks in Israel through Lebanon itself. The war a few years ago was basic, basically initiated because uh, the Israelis would not give up Lebanese prisoners that it had been holding for years. All right. Uh, Alistair Krug, do you th is the feeling in Beirut as well that perhaps a message is being sent by Iran that the sanctions, the measures are not going to work? Iran has still got plenty of options in the region. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think that's the purpose of the visit because I think the Iranians um, believe that the failure of the sanctions regime is self-evident already and will certainly become uh, plainer as time goes on. Uh, but going back to what you said, I mean, in the region, I think that what we're seeing, in fact, is a paradox, again, of the West misreading the map in this region and m misreading the Lebanese map in particular because the attempt in pursuing the tribunal was originally to weaken Syria. Now it has seems to be to try and undermine and hollow out Hezbollah. But in practice, who will most likely suffer and who is already becoming divided and at odds over this is the Sunni community that has been allied to the West and to America and to Europe, because they, many of them, do not want to see this escalate to an all-out confrontation with Hezbollah or the Shia in this country. And already there are uh, there's disquiet within that community about the direction in which the Sunni um, community as a whole is going. So far from actually ending up by weakening Hezbollah, this action, which is so ill-conceived, is likely, if it doesn't end up by fracturing the Lebanese politics altogether and ending up with no government here at all, is likely to cause as much damage to their own friends and colleagues, if you like, in Beirut, as it will do to Hezbollah in the south of Beirut. All right. Uh, Andrew Tabler, how might the United States, do you think, now review its policy to the region if, in fact, it isn't working, as Mr. Uh, Crook is pointing out? Uh, well, that would assume that, that the United States has a coordinated regional policy, um, which, it, which it, I don't think it, it actually does. Um, it has a number of policies, some of which deal with Iran, some of which deal with the peace process. These are the two main issues that this administration is concerned about. One of the reasons why I think that we see this decline in Lebanon um, and, and certainly the, uh, the West's support for its traditional allies there is because of a lack of interest um, in the Levant. That might change if there is uh, some kind of conflict or tension, whether it be from the tribunal or other issues. Uh, we had a border incident uh, this last summer between Israel and Lebanon, all of which are of great concern. Um, but uh, it will be interesting to see if the Obama administration does uh, come up with something coordinated to, to deal with uh, it, what seems to be expanding Iranian influence. All right, talking about the possibility of, of conflict that you mentioned there, Mr. Marandi, how do you think the appetite is for conflict with Iran right now? It's been said that uh, Lebanon uh, could be one of the uh, frontline states in any conflict with Iran over its nuclear program. Is there much appetite for that, though? Well, Iranians don't believe that the United States is in a position to initiate any, any conflict, despite the fact that the Obama uh, regime is re basic, is very misguided in its policies towards Iran, constantly threatening Iran with uh, uh, military strikes and even hypothetically with a nuclear strike through its uh, nuclear posture review. Um, right now in Iran, for the most part, people are very pessimistic about this administration and, and they now more or less see Obama like to be very similar to George Bush. Um, but the Iranians understand that the Americans are on the decline. Uh, a relative decline uh, because of the situation in Iraq and Afghanistan, the economic situation, and the situation in the region is also changing. Turkey is now a very different country from what it was a few years ago. And uh, Lebanon and Syria, Syria is in a much stronger position than it was before. So time is not on the side of the Americans, and the Iranians it's believe that the Americans the only way time on the side of Ahmadinejad, though. Some point out he's received a better welcome in Beirut than he does in some parts of Iran. Well, I've never been a personal fan of the president, but uh, there is no doubt that he is highly popular in the country, and the polls carried out by the Americans show that, uh, that he is very popular. There is a minority that dislikes him, 
but I think that's true in many parts of the world. But there is no denying his popularity. But I think the so point this isn't is, a publicity is stunt to is boost his image at home. You don't think the recent trips that he's been making? Well, it is a public diplomacy move. I don't think it's a, the Iranians would consider it a stunt. After all, the United States and the Western media and Western governments have been stating that Iran is isolated, that people, the, the international community uh, is worried about Iran, yet polls th show that Iran has vast support in the region, polls carried out by Americans. And the scenes from Beirut to themselves show how popular he is abroad. So I think it does have a positive effect for him in Iran. But uh, I also think that uh, in any case, the Iranians are not looking for confrontation, despite the fact that they don't feel that the Americans are in a strong position. But they feel that the Americans right. really are not yet willing to make a change in their policy and to be more reasonable to, to be able to move towards rapprochement. All right, Andrew Tabler, uh, you talked a minute ago about the perhaps confused, uh, disorganized U.S. policy towards the Levant. How about when it comes to Iran? Sanctions simply don't seem to be working, do they? They're not... They don't, they don't seem to be slowing down Iran's nuclear drive. And if anything, China is still buying Iranian petroleum products. South Korea is sidestepping them. Turkey wants to triple its $10 billion annual trade. Is it time for Washington to think of something else? Well, I think that sanctions uh, in itself uh, are not going to bring the Iranian regime down. Um, the question is, do they change their calculations? It's a little bit too early to tell that. Uh, my, my guess is that they probably will in some way. Um, to what degree uh, there'll be some kind of review of that going forward, um, but uh, but again, this is the administration's uh, attempt here is not uh, to, to bring down the regime in, in Tehran, as far as I can tell, but rather is to affect um, their choices as regard their nuclear program. They might not do that in the end. After that, the question is, what does the West do then? And uh, and that is something that uh, policymakers in Washington are debating all the time now. They're debating it. How much consensus and debate, though, is there within the White House, Mr. Tabler? I'm not really sure. Um, I think uh, that there are a number of different opinions, um, some of which, of course, range from military options, which are not off the table as far as we know from the administration, uh, the whole way to a, a, a containment policy of Iran in the region. Um, what they will choose, maybe they'll cho choose both. They could choose one. Um, it would be very interesting, and it would be very inter interesting to see what an American president uh, decides uh, going into a general election uh, about two years from now. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Let's thank our guests in Beirut, Alistair Crook in Tehran, Said Mohammed Marandi, and in Washington, D.C., Andrew Tavla. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. As always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Just email them to us at InsideStory.net. For now, it's goodbye. Thank you.